Full Eagle, Wikipedia Audio Full Eagle is a combined field training exercise conducted annually by the Republic of Korea Armed Forces and the United States Armed Forces under the auspices of the Combined Forces Command. It is one of the largest military exercises conducted annually in the world. Full Eagle has been a source of friction with the government of Democratic People's Republic of Korea and domestic rock critics. Full Eagle is an exercise conducted by the U.S. and ROC Armed Forces, consisting of rear area security and stability operations, onward movement of critical assets to the forward area, special operations, ground maneuver, amphibious operations, combat air operations, maritime action group operations and counter special operations forces exercises. The United Nations Command informs the North Korean People's Army that South Korea and the United States will be conducting the exercise. The United Nations Command also reassured the Korean People's Army at general officer level talks that these exercises, conducted annually in or around March, are purely defensive in nature and have no connection to ongoing or current events. The Neutral Nations Supervisory Commission monitors the exercise for violations of the Korean Armistice Agreement. Operational Summary Since 2001, Full Eagle combined with the annual American South Korean Reception, Staging, Onward Movement and Integration Combined Exercises, with RSOI being renamed Key Resolve in 2008. Full Eagle 1997 took place between October 17 and November 6, 1997, and it included a non-combatant evacuation operation, reception, staging, onward movement and integration maneuvers, combat operations, and anti-infiltration activities. One significant feature of FE-97 was the deployment of the U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Hamilton with the carrier strike group led by the carrier Independence. Hamilton also participated in a combined joint Navy-Coast Guard force to provide defense ring around the harbor of Pusan. Full Eagle 1998 took place between November 4 and December 2, 1998. Full Eagle 1998 was notable for a number of accomplishments. It marked the use of the multiple integrated laser engagement system by all exercise participants, allowing forces to engage in realistic battle conditions without the loss of personnel or equipment. FE-98 marked the first time that the U.S. Navy established anti-submarine operations centers off both coasts of Korea with the U.S. 7th Fleet's Battle Force, Task Force 70, in tactical command of ROC and American submarines. Full Eagle 1998 also featured an amphibious assault involving seven battalions of ROC and U.S. forces. Full Eagle 1999 took place between October 26 and November 5, 1999, and that year's exercise scenario involved defending against infiltration by North Korean Special Operation Forces into the rear area. Most training sites were located well south of Seoul, with training events included firing blank ammunition and night operations. Full Eagle 2000 took place between October 25 and November 3, 2000, it included 30,000 U.S. and over 500,000 ROC military personnel involved in air and ground operations, as well as maritime operation in defense of Pusan. FE-00 also included a non-combatant evacuation exercise codenamed Courageous Channel. Combined Forces Command announced that Full Eagle 2001 was postponed, and starting in 2002, its annual Full Eagle exercise would be combined with its reception, staging, onward movement, and integration combined ROC U.S. exercise.
It was also announced that the new exercise would be scheduled for one to two weeks in the spring of 2002, and the exercise would take place annually thereafter. ROC Military did execute an anti-terrorism exercise in 2001. RSOI slash Full Eagle 2002 took place between 21-27 March 2002, and it featured amphibious warfare training between the Republic of Korea Marine Corps and the 31st Marine Expeditionary Unit and the Essex Amphibious Ready Group which included landing at Toksok R.I. Beach. RSOI slash Full Eagle 2003 took place between March 3 and April 2, 2003 amid rising tensions between the United States and North Korea who threatened to withdraw from the Korean War armistice. Prior to the start of RSOI slash FE-03, a U.S. Air Force RC-135 reconnaissance aircraft was shadowed by four North Korean aircraft. The 2nd Battalion, 34th Armor Regiment was deployed from Fort Riley, Kansas, to participate in full RSOI slash full Eagle 2003. RSOI slash full Eagle 2004 took place between 21-28 March 2004. It featured amphibious warfare training exercises between the Republic of Korea Marine Corps and the 31st Marine Expeditionary Unit and the Essex Amphibious Ready Group which were supported by P-3 Orion Maritime Patrol aircraft from Patrol Squadron 1. Full Eagle Series RSOI slash Full Eagle 2005 demonstrated the role of air power in theater-wide military operations as ROC Air Force worked closely with U.S. Marine Corps Marine Wing Support Squadron 171 and Marine Fighter Attack Squadron 122 from Marine Aircraft Group 12, as well as Carrier Air Wing 2 from the U.S. Navy's Carrier Strike Group 9 led by the carrier USS Abraham Lincoln. RSOI slash Full Eagle 2006 took place between 26-31 March 2006, and is designed to improve the command's abilities to defend the ROC and includes a full range of equipment, capabilities, and personnel. This year's exercise marked the 45th Full Eagle exercise and the fifth time it has been combined with RSOI. This exercise featured close air support for ground units, air-to-air -air defense exercises, maritime interoperability training, and expeditionary operations involving Carrier Strike Group 9, with the carrier Abraham Lincoln serving as the exercise's maritime command and control node. 31st Marine Expeditionary Unit and Essex Amphibious Ready Group participated in assault climbing, live fire ranges, urban combat training, community outreach efforts, and a combined amphibious landing with 3rd Regimental Landing Team, 1st ROC Marine Division and the ROC Navy's Amphibious Squadron 53. In addition to the rehearsed scenarios throughout RSOI slash FE-06, the salvage ships USS Safeguard and ROKS Pyeong Tyke conducted a real-world salvage operation for a U.S. Air Force F-16C fighter aircraft that crashed off South Korea's coast on March 14, 2006 as part in the 21st Combined Diving and Salvage Exercise. RSOI slash Full Eagle 2007 took place between 2531 March 2007, with its initial focused on initial operational flow of deployed forces to Korean theater of operations. This RSOI phase incorporated receiving military units in Korea, connecting units with their equipment once in country moving them into their respective strategic position within the peninsula and integrating newly arrived forces with the forces that are already here. The full eagle phase included amphibious landing involving over 3,000 American Marines and sailors as well as 1,400 ROC Marines.
Key Resolve Slash Full Eagle 2008 included the participation with U.S. Navy Carrier Strike Group 11, led by the carrier Nimitz, and marked the first time that the RSOI phase would be known by its new resignation of Key Resolve. Key Resolve was now primarily a command post exercise with computer-based simulations that focused on deploying troops and equipment to Korea in the event of an attack while Full Eagle continued to be a series of field exercises. Both exercises have U.S. troops training with South Korean military personnel. Key Resolve slash Full Eagle 2009 began on February 28, 2009. Key Resolve slash Full Eagle was held in the aftermath of the sinking of the rock corvette Jinan and the shelling of Yunpyeong Island by North Korea. Approximately 12,800 U.S. and 200,000 South Korean troops participated in the exercise. Key Resolve was the computer-based simulation portion of the combined exercise, while Full Eagle was the peninsula-wide training portion of the exercise. Key Resolve was scheduled to end March 10, and Full Eagle on April 30. The major U.S. naval formation that participated in Key Resolve slash Full Eagle 2009 was Carrier Strike Group 3. During the exercise, the aircraft carrier John C. Stennis was overflown by two Russian Ilyushin IL-38 Maritime Patrol aircraft on March 16 and two Tupolev Tu-95 long-range bombers on March 17. In both incidents, the intruders were intercepted and escorted by F-A-18 Hornets until the Russian aircraft left the exercise area. Task Force Hawkins an army battalion, deployed from the United States, drawing equipment from Army Preposition Stock 4 at Camp Carroll, Korea. The task force conducted live fire exercises at Rodriguez Range. The task force also appears to have been designated TF Hawkins II, and included soldiers from 1 to 64 armor and 2 to 5 FA. Special Operations Command Korea conducted airborne jumps with a helium blimp and gondola at the rock drop zone prior to the official start of RSOI-FE09. RSOI-Full Eagle Series Key Resolve-Full Eagle Series Key Resolve-Full Eagle 2010 took place between 8-18 March 2010 which included U.S. 7th Air Force and Marine Aircraft Group 12 participating in the key resolve phase of computer simulated exercise scenarios as well as physical military exercises during the full eagle phase. The Combined Battle Simulation Center, collocated with the U.S. Korea Battle Simulation Center, served as the exercise hub. The operational force was based at another simulation facility, the Warrior Training Center at Camp Casey, South Korea. Other simulation organizations included the Korea Air Simulation Center on Ozan Air Base, South Korea's Army Battle Command Training Program in Daejeon, and the Three Marine Expeditionary Forces Tactical Exercise Control Group, based at Camp Courtney in Okinawa. Japan. Reactions The annual Key Resolve slash Full Eagle exercise started February 28, 2011, and employed almost 13,000 U.S. troops and more than 200,000 South Korean troops, as well as a U.S. Navy carrier strike group led by the USS Ronald Reagan. Key Resolve involved computer-based military simulations that ran from March 10, 10, while full Eagle field training programs were completed by March 31, 2011. The annual Key Resolve exercise took place between February 28 and March 9, 2012 and it employed almost 200,000 South Korean troops and 2,100 U.S. troops.
About 800 more U.S. participants will come from outside South Korea. Also, observers from Australia, Canada, Denmark, Norway, and Britain, took part as members of the UN. Command Separately from the key resolve, the full eagle exercises took place from March 1 to April 30 and it included about 11,000 U.S. forces plus South Korean troops in division-sized or smaller unit operations. Full Eagle 2012 was marred by the loss of a U.S. Air Force F-16 fighter that crashed in a rice paddy on March 21, 2012, about 150 miles south of Seoul, near Kunsan Air Base. The pilot ejected safely and the F-16 was a unit of the 51st Fighter Wing. 2013's Key Resolve slash Full Eagle bilateral military exercises took place amid rising tensions across the Korean Peninsula. The United Nations Command, Military Armistice Commission, Korea informed the Korean People's Army through its Panmunjom mission of the 2013 exercises dates and its non-provocative nature on February 21, 2013. Key Resolve is an annual computer-assisted simulation exercise, and Key Resolve 2013 was conducted from 11 to March 21, 2013. For the first time, ROC's Joint Chiefs of Staff planned and executed this combined synthetic exercise. Full Eagle 2013 consisted of separate but interrelated joint and combined field training exercises conducted between March 1 and April 30, 2013. Approximately 10,000 U.S. troops, along with as many as 200,000 South Korean soldiers participated in Full Eagle 2013. In response to North Korean protests, the United States augmented its forces by deploying B-2 and B-52 strategic bombers, F-22 strike fighters, a nuclear-powered attack submarine, and four Arleigh Burke-class destroyers of Destroyer Squadron 15. Key Resolve 2014 was a command post exercise involving wartime scenarios conducted on computer systems which was held between February 24 to March 3, 2014. Full Eagle 2014 is the field training exercise held between March 3 and April 18, 2014. An important accomplishment for Key Resolve 2014 was the establishment of a combined maritime operations center. Full Eagle 2014 is the field training exercise held between March 3 and April 18, 2014. A third exercise codenamed Songyang was bilateral amphibious assault drills held between March 27, 27 and April 7, 2014. Like earlier team spirit exercises, full eagle exercises have been a source of controversy with the government of North Korea and domestic South Korean critics. In response to the start of Key Resolve slash Full Eagle 2008, North Korea's Committee for the Peaceful Reunification of the Fatherland issued a statement via the official Korean Central News Agency that read in part, Dialogue and confrontation, peace and war can never go together. We will sternly take self-defensive steps to defend peace and stability of the Korean Peninsula. Also, for Key Resolve slash Full Eagle 2010, KCNA quoted North Korea's military high command warning about the upcoming ROC U.S. joint exercise as follows. The units of the three services of the Korean People's Army should keep themselves fully ready to go into action in order to blow up the citadel of aggressors once the order is issued. For RSOI slash Full Eagle 2007, rock domestic protesters stuck stickers on American vehicles as they landed on the Malipo Beach, a public beach. 
In response, for RSOI slash Full Eagle 2008, almost 800 South Korean combat police guarded Malipo Beach. Also, between 40 and 80 protesters demonstrated on a sidewalk overlooking Malipo Beach. During Key Resolve slash Full Eagle 2010, U.S. Forces Korea advised U.S. military personnel and dependents about announced protests by the Korean Confederation of Trade Unions and a group known as Pyeongtong San around the Korean War Memorial. Held in the aftermath of the sinking of the ROKS Jinan and the bombardment of Yunpyeong during 2010, as well as the breakdown of bilateral military talks on February 11, 2011, RSOI slash Full Eagle 2011 was held during a period of heightened tension on the Korean Peninsula. On February 28, 2011, a North Korean military statement threatened a merciless counteraction as engulfing Seoul and Sea of Flames while the KCNA urged direct fire at sources of the anti-DPRK psychological warfare to destroy them on the principle of self-defense. Also, on February 28, 2011, 30 South Korean activists demonstrated outside one of the military exercise control centers at Songnam while issuing a press statement that strongly urged South Korea and the U.S. to stop fooling Koreans and the world and to stop the exercise which aims to invade North Korea and to overturn the regime. For Key Resolve slash Full Eagle 2012, the KCNA issued a statement on February 27, 2012 criticizing that year's exercises. The war drills are an unpardonable infringement upon the sovereignty and dignity of the DPRK as they evidently target the DPRK, which is in the mourning period. The army and people of the DPRK are fully ready to fight a war with them. During Key Resolve slash Full Eagle 2013, North Korea threatened to abandon the Korean Armistice Agreement, arguing the exercises threatened North Korea with nuclear weapons and that the U.S. was unwilling to negotiate a peace treaty to replace the armistice. Jun Gang Ilbo reported that U.S. vessels equipped with nuclear weapons were participating in the exercise, and the Pentagon publicly announced that B-52 bombers flown over South Korea were reaffirming the U.S. nuclear umbrella for South Korea. On February 16, 2014, South Korean defense officials claimed that a North Korean warship repeatedly crossed into South Korean territorial waters overnight in spite of repeated warning. The alleged incursion occurred just as South Korea was joining the United States in bilateral Key Resolve slash Full Eagle 2014 military exercises. The incident was said to have occurred at the Northern Limit Line which North Korea disputes as a legitimate maritime boundary. On March 2, 2014, South Korea defense officials reported that North Korea launched two additional short-range Scud C missiles in the North's recent barrage of missile firings. This latest incident took place prior to the arrival of four U.S. Aegis-equipped warships a U.S. nuclear attack submarine, and the U.S. 7th Fleet S flagship to South Korean ports for Exercise Full Eagle 2014. However, for the first time since 2010, North Korea agreed to allow reunion visits for families separated by the Korean demilitarized zone after assurance from South Korea of the defensive nature of the 2014 Key Resolve Full Eagle exercises.